up, YouTube? It's your girl, Ash Love and Life, and I'm back with another video. Ooh. Oh, my God. <laughs> what was that? I don't know, you guys, but you know what they say. New do, a new you. So, I guess the new me is trying to come out. <laughs> Make sure you like, comment, and smash that subscribe button for your girl. In this video, we're going to be talking about the training academy. This is where officers go in order to become certified. You're going to be trained in a whole bunch of stuff, and then you're going to go take your certification exam. And then, once you pass, you are considered a certified correction officer. Okay, so what I did was I went onto a forum and got a whole bunch of questions for you and I'm gonna answer them. So this video is gonna be like a Q&A and your girl gonna get you right for the academy, okay? You gonna be prepared and you gonna be ready. They are gonna be like, oh, who was that? <laughs> so yeah, let's get into this video. Question number one, does the academy cost? Yes, the academy does cost. However, if you get hired on first with the agency, they will pay for you to go through the academy. You just have to sign a contract saying that you will work for them for two years after you become certified. If you decide to leave before the two years are up, you are responsible for paying the money back. I honestly don't know anybody that had to pay the money back, but you might be the first one. So just make sure that you have the money set aside or you decide to work the two years, okay? Okay, next question. What to wear? On the first day, you're probably either gonna have on your class A or your class B. If you're not sure, just put on your class A uniform and have your class B uniform in the car. That way, you have both, okay? Once you get into the academy, they're gonna tell you basically what you need to wear for PT and for graduation. For PT, you're probably gonna need some black tennis shoes and some black sweatpants and you, your class will probably order some shirts like this, okay? Next question, what food to bring? You want to bring lots of water of course, and you want to bring healthy food. You want to bring food that's gonna keep you energized, that's gonna keep you focused. You want to bring food that's gonna get you through that day, okay? So bring a lot of food, a lot of water, and make sure it's healthy food. Healthy food keeps you energized and keeps you focused. Next question, what supplies do I need to bring? Okay, so I made a list of the supplies that I would recommend you bring. A notebook to take notes because you are going to be learning. A bag to carry your stuff. So you can bring your clear lunch bag and, and have your things in there. You will need a watch. A watch will be good for when you go on your breaks. And on your lunch break, you can keep track of the time because you cannot have your phone inside the training building. You need pens and pencils, of course, to write. A planner. A planner or a calendar will be good because you will be taking weekly tests, you will have to do PT, you will have to do a lot of more things. So in order to keep track and stay organized, a good thing to have is a planner or a calendar. A hat, of course, to keep the sun away and sunscreen so you don't burn your skin. Also, I would recommend to bring a lawn chair and a cooler for when you go to the gun range or when you're outside. Your drinks can stay cold and as well as you have somewhere to sit comfortably because there's not always a lot of benches and tables for everybody. Okay, moving on along. Does the pepper spray burn and for how long? Oh my gosh, you guys. That is the worst. Like, pepper spray day or what we call spray day, it's no way to prepare for it. Just know that it's gonna burn. And the best advice I can give to you is to just stay calm, is to relax. Do not get yourself hyped up about it. Everybody has to go through it. No one has died from it. Just relax, okay? And after everyone has gotten sprayed, your class probably will sit for a couple hours until it comes down and then they will allow you to go home. Now, that stuff does reactivate, which means when you go home and you get in the shower and wherever that pepper spray was at on your body, 
it's gonna burn again. Like, it's crazy, you guys. But you will learn more about that. It probably burns for about, probably like 10 to 15 minutes. And you're just irritated afterwards. You're just like, just really irritated. But you'll get through it, okay? Do I need to practice how to shoot? I honestly would recommend that you do not practice if you have no experience with the gun. Wait until you start firearms and learn the techniques, how to hold a gun, how to shoot a gun, how to holster a gun. Then once you learn those techniques, then I suggest you go to the gun range and practice before it's time to qualify, okay? If you already have experience with a gun, yeah, it won't hurt to go to the gun range and practice. But just be careful with um, having someone teach you how to shoot a gun because once you start the academy, they're gonna teach you a probably, they're probably gonna teach you a whole different way, okay? And then it's more harder to train a person how to shoot a different way versus just showing them the original way. Next question, how many times do you get tased? Okay, so I think I got tased like eight times. I got tased on my hand right here. I got tased on the back of my calf. I got tased on my back, like th with the shield. I got tased on my chest for like eight seconds. They hold it for eight seconds. And we got tased where they Put it on somebody's finger and it goes all the way around because we're all touching fingers. And I want to say that's it. The tasing is not as bad as the pepper spray. It's really like a quick pain. It's like once it's on there, once it's off, it's over. Okay, it's very manageable. Okay, next question. What happens when you can't pass your state board exam? Okay, so once you complete the academy and you finish all of your courses, you will have to take your state board exam. You will have three chances to take this exam. If you do not pass it on the third chance, you will have to resign, okay? But listen, if that does happen to you, it is not the end of the world. It is more jobs out there. And I think it's other options that you can do if you really wanna be a crush officer. I think you can go to pay for a class, I'm not for sure, so I don't really want to speak on that. But if that does happen to you, it's okay. And just talk to your instructor to see what you can do so that you can be a correction. Okay, guys, this is going to be the final question. What happens if you get sick during the academy? If you get sick during the academy, it really depends on if you are in a high liability or a low liability. For example, if you're doing fight arms and you get the flu and you're out three or four days, you will have to redo that block over another time. And nine times 10, you will not be graduating with your class because that block won't be available in time before you graduate, okay? It is not a big deal. It happens, people get sick, people have family issues, it is okay, okay? That you will just have to redo it another time and you probably will not graduate with your class, okay? OMG, you made it to the end of my video and I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Make sure you give your girl a thumbs up and make sure you comment and subscribe to my channel. If you enjoyed this video and you want to hear more about the Training Academy, leave me a comment and I will do a part two and we will go more in depth about the Training Academy, okay? Thank you, love, happiness, and peace.